Hey, welcome to Trapping Inc. I'm Rich Mellon, and welcome to season six. This is the first episode of season six, and we are so excited to be bringing a new year to you. I bet you're wondering what I'm doing in my wood yard uh, when I'm supposed to be trapping. Well, I am trapping. Uh, our ranch is uh, in the farmland, and the farmland is where all those wonderful coyotes come from, those western coyotes that score such big dollars on auction and, the, and with the fur buyers. Ours up here in the north are a little bit darker than the beauties from southern Alberta and southern Saskatchewan, but nonetheless, they're still worth good money. Today, I am trapping right here on one of my home quarters, and today we're going to be using the power ram. We have had so much feedback and so many questions about the power ram, I'm going to try and answer them all today, or some of them. <laughs> I've only got so much time, but it's going to be a good one. Stick with us. Trapping is the cornerstone that Canada was built on. Brave and sometimes crazy men and women, fueled by the lucrative fur trade, explored and mapped our great nation. Hundreds of years have passed since then, but trapping still remains vibrant, strong, and steeped in the ancient traditions The fur bearers still follow the old paths and live as dictated by thousands of years of instinct. Fur only gets prime in the harsh temperatures of winter and trappers must respect and prepare for the weather. Trapping's past is firmly rooted in history, but today the gear and techniques have changed. Canada is still known for the best wild fur in the world, and today our pelts are sold on the global market. Our community is large, and our numbers are growing. We are trappers. This is what we do, and where we belong. Join us in our adventures. Welcome to Trapping Inc., the face of today's trapper. Today we are chasing coyotes. We're snaring coyotes. We're actually on my home. And uh, you'll probably hear some background traffic in that because the highway is just a couple hundred yards away. And I got a bait pile here. I put out uh, the trimmings and the cuttings and that from uh, Sandy's moose last night. Set up some snares where I thought they might go. And I got this one. Now, uh, unfortunately, he's got what we call dog louse or shoulder mite. Now, I'll show you this up close. Yeah, lots of ravens. That's what brings all the kites is the, is the birds. I'll show you this up close once I get it out of the snare here. This is what we call dog louse or shoulder mites. And you can see he's got it on both sides of his shoulder. It's unfortunate he's not worth skinning. There's no, there's no value to a pelt like that. Uh, and they get them from, uh, from the domestic dogs. But let's uh, get this snare set back up and we'll get it on a new trail. Okay, let's do some uh, power ram myth busting here. We've had lots of questions uh, about power rams. Um, they probably elicit more fear than any other thing we use as a trapper. Some of it is, you know, well-deserved. Some of it is just uh, old wives' tales. Here we go. Two parts of, of a ram, okay? Here's the ram, the ram itself. You can see that it is nothing more than one giant spring. So this whole thing opens up and this this all is, it becomes a, a, a spring and, and a force for killing. Keeps up the pressure all the time we, well, on the, uh, the carotid arteries of the animal. The uh, snare for it, in this case, this is the coyote snare. It's a 40, uh, coyote ram, a 48 inch ram. 
and the snare fort's 47 inches. So that means that this all the way closed is only 47 inches. This is 48, so it's, it, it's even more uh, pressure on it considering the fact that the, the coyote's neck is also in there. So you have a lot of positive pressure here. Oh, there we go. There we go. Do better over where there's a little bit thicker bush. However, that's not always the case that they're gonna, oh, look at something come and check it out too, in the snow. You can hear the highway right here. We're on my home quarter and I'm right up against the highway. Oh, we got a coyote. Looks like a small one. I wonder what kind of shape it's in. Oh yeah, this one's nice. No, uh, no mites on it. Very little if there is. And it didn't get far. It hit right there, boom. This is a, a female. Oh yeah, look, look at that. That's what uh, they pay the big bucks for on the Western Cayutes, man. Look at that. Look at how clear that is. Oh, the uh, ram deployed. Did what it was supposed to do. Nice thing about them is that they are incredibly fast. They do the job quickly. I like that. I mean, that, that's our responsibility, right? We're out harvesting these animals or killing these animals, however you want to put it. I'm not a big fan of the word harvest because I'm not a farmer. I'm, uh, I'm a, a trapper and a hunter and we kill. This is uh, probably last night. Uh, yeah, it snowed a bit last night. Nice coyote, that one will go for some good bucks. But whether we are hunting and killing with a bow and arrow or killing with a, a rifle or trapping, I, I prefer my kills to be quick. I don't like them to be sitting there waiting for me. I like it over with. And that is the, the biggest advantage to, with the power ram is that it is a very quick kill system. Oh, we'll get this set back up. Where am I gonna set this? I don't like to move them too far because in a situation like this now, one coyote has come around and looked at it. This has been a really good trail here. I see where he went that way rather than, than, than going down the, the trail that I picked this up on. I'll probably set it right close here. We'll just put a new, uh, we'll get her reset and put a new snare on her. There you go. Once again, always have that knee in the way. So if this lets gets loose here, it twists, it rolls or whatever, just your knee gonna get a little bit of a, a, of a rub, that's it. Not gonna lose all those pretty teeth. <laughs> so, we have our safety on here, or our, our latch, whatever you wanna call it. Then it's just a matter of putting our, our snare back in here. I pre-rigged mine. Um, you see with uh, one of the fellas that we trapped with here a couple years ago, Darren, he, uh, he pre-rigs them like this and, it, and it's uh, all nicely set up and, and ready so that I don't have to have wire with me or anything else. I'll show you that. Maybe that'll be the tech tip I'll do in this show is how to pre-rig these. Darren did such a great job, but it, it always bears uh, repeating. Okay that I'll set up where I want and then I'll remove my safety I use my bare hands um, they know who I am they know that this is my bait they know that they're sharing it with me I don't worry a lot about, about the amount of steel that I have when it comes to coyotes just because coyotes he th this this female she probably crawled under four uh, barbed wire fences yesterday before she got here they're used to the smell of steel so that doesn't bother them
Trapping Inc. is brought to you by these fine sponsors. At Old Smokes Coffee, we slow roast our coffee over a fire, making it smooth and memorable. You can order our smoked coffee online. Old Smokes Coffee, crafted coffee for the courageous. Halford Hides, unique beyond compare. Everything for the outdoors. You can shop in person or online from our vast catalog. Range Road Enterprises understands hard work. Our products work as hard as you do. See our full line of firewood processors, sawmills, and more at your nearest dealer. We hunt and trap with our Zeiss Conquest V4 and V6 rifle scopes and the new line of rings. Carl Zeiss Sport Optics. Confidence in the toughest conditions. Okay, all I did was just move it a little further down the trail. This one got hit there. There's still a good trail here. Uh, fresh tracks on it. I just moved a little bit further away. We're supposed to get a lot of snow in the next day or so, so it could be interesting. But I got one out of uh, out of six snares. Uh, hasn't been that many coyotes in here. There's been one come in since that one was caught, so I'm happy. I'm happy. Nice, it's nice coyote. It'd be worth it. Standard snare uh, needs a little bit of uh, of ability to adjust it, and it needs. We, we don't want that big of a of a snare for our, our coyotes. We want something like, like like about that. So we need to get some support in here. One, we got to make it shorter, and plus we want to get some support so we can adjust up and down a little bit for the for the depth and that. We're going to take a piece of, of tire wire, and we're going to put a little bit of a J hook right in the very end of it. Okay. And then we're going to take and slide that J hook over top of that aluminum breakaway. Grab a hold of it with our pliers. Then we're going to take and go right around here tight, nice and tight once. Come back out on top, put a little bit of a hump in her so that we get in front of our stop. That's going to be our stop for our, for our ram. And after that, it's just a matter of taking and, and bending the tie wire around it until you get to the point that you like. Okay. Now you can see that I can adjust this up and down. I could go, I can go smaller if I want to. Always bend your end up a little bit just so that when your snare comes back, it can't jump over top. But see, this gives me some adjustment. It gives me some some uh, support. Our snare rigged up, it goes through here, and then there's our, our quick link, or lap link. Just take and rotate it on, and the snare goes on. Take and shake that washer down. Now you, there are, um, there we go. There are safeties for this, if you like. Um, and it's probably a good, a good thing to start with is the, is the safety until you're comfortable with it. Because you can see that this is actually loose on here. That by the time that goes on, we've, we've tightened it up and, and uh, we're loose. The last question we've got lots about is how to actually hold the ram upright. And it's pretty simple. Lots of guys just lean it against a tree. We prop it up in the brush. I use a ram foot a lot, okay? And it's just simply a piece of angle iron with a, with a spike on it. Ram it down into the, into the snow works or into the dirt. It doesn't matter. This doesn't have to be, you know, bound tight to a tree or anything. As a matter of fact, I kind of like it if it falls over when the, when the coyote hits the ram. Here's the reason. He goes into this snare and all of a sudden he feels a snare against him. Well, if he moves it enough so that this falls over, now he forgets about what's around his neck and he's scared by movement beside him and he jumps away. Well, now he deploys the ram and it's a done deal. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. One thing about using a ram foot is uh, take an anchor it to your ram because about half the time it launches. So pro tip, <laughs> I just have these big pieces of, of cable I run through a hole in the, in the ram foot and through the center of the, of the ram. Driving Inc. is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Argo Extreme Terrain Vehicles conquer any season, any terrain. See all the new models at your newest dealer. Argo, go anywhere. Southland Trailer Corporation makes the Royal Cargo Trailer used by Trapping Inc. Southland Trailer, behind you all the way. Midland Radio helps you stay in touch in the wild. Check out the new X-Talkers at your nearest dealer. Communication for every adventure. Alberta Outdoorsman Magazine. 
Alberta's only hunting, fishing, and trapping magazine. You can keep up with all the action at trappinginc.com or join our Facebook and YouTube sites. As trappers, we're always concerned about being as efficient as possible and, and that our animals, you know, in a, in a dispatch situation, dispatch very quickly. One of the things that just about nobody thinks about and, and is a, a pretty old argument is this has got to be anchored, right? So we're going to anchor to, uh, to the tree, but where should we anchor? And that's a good question. Now, everybody always assumes that through this eye is the best way, but if you go through that eye, you end up allowing this. Now, see here, we've got a, a coyote in here. This, this is a coyote. So I'm not, I'm not sure if this will work or not, but we'll give this a try. But when the coyote can pull, you know, you've got, you've got this bow here. You know, basically this is a big bow. And when he's pulling in the center, center point here, he can actually make this flex. You can see how it, it, it can actually make it, make it flex, right? So he's not, he's putting extra pressure on, but he, he, he's also getting, getting a little bit of relief. He can move it around quite a bit. What we want to do is we want to stop that flex from being there. So here's what you do. This is the best anchor point here. It's going to be either up on the eye, at this point here where he's, the coyote pulling is pulling directly against it. He, he can't get any more slack in it whatsoever. Or you can take and put a, a slider on here. And sometimes this is what I do. Just uh, have a cable and you take and run your cable here. And then I have a quick link on all of them for going around the tree. I just have this, this here. And then when, the, when it goes off and the coyote pulls, well, this slides up and does the same thing. I just don't have another piece of cable hanging up here. You can have that other piece of cable. I don't think it would matter. Sometimes we overthink things. But by doing that, where you, where you actually anchor is, is important. You know, it, it is important because anchoring in the center here allows them to, to do this, to compress it. Uh, and it's never getting, gonna get any tighter than, than when it's at this point. If they're anchored up here, she's a done deal. She's tight, won't get any looser. I hope that is, I've answered everybody's questions. Okay, I got a couple up here. <laughs> Look at that. There is a beautiful fishing track. Isn't that obvious what that is? There you go. Doesn't get any clearer than that as far as the fishing track goes. I see a coyote up here. I do. I do. Little one looks like. Looks pretty dang nice. Let me get uh, set up here and we'll take a look at her. All right. Not a very big one. Very nice and frozen and solid. <laughs> Went around the loop a couple times here. This is out on the trail quite a ways from my bait. And, uh, you know, I haven't had a lot of snow, which has been the difficult part. So they're not making great trails. I'll just move this back here a little bit more and set it up there. You know, obviously I've got a catch circle here, so I don't want to set it right there. Oh, 
see what kind of shape it's in. Oh, it's got a little bit of the little bit of the rub on it. It's not a big kite, but a little bit of rub. Well, yeah, that's all you can do though is just catch them out of the out of the uh, population. You don't catch them out of the population, then then, then it just continues. Here's where I'm reset, and if you can see, I still have the safety on that, so I got to remember to take that off before I leave. But it's right on the trail. You can see right down the center of the trail. Coyote actually carries its head pretty low, so like uh, I think Ryan Demchinski likes to say, he he sets them one to one, uh, one and a half coke cans off the off the snow. <laughs> Anyway, we got a lot more to check here. Well, that is Power Rams 101 for coyotes. When it comes to lethality, nothing compares. It's a four foot killing spring. Nothing compares. Nothing you can do to a free hanging or anything else compares to a four foot killing spring. I hope I've answered all your questions. If I haven't, you know how to get a hold of me uh, on YouTube, Facebook, uh, and Instagram. I got wood to get out there and process, and I really enjoy doing that, so I'm going to get gone. Maybe we'll see you down the line.